Hey everyone, this is Arrow Boy from Alexa Nodes, and today I'll be showing you a plugin called Citizens. So I'll basically just be showing you an overview of how to use the plugin and most of the basic features that are useful to your Minecraft server. So let's begin. So the first step would be to download Citizens. So with a quick search on Google, you can find the Citizens page on Spigot MC. So let's just search that up. So Citizens Spigot, and you'll find it over here. So do notice that it's actually premium, but anyone can download it. So I'll show you that now. So you'll notice that it says uh, you have to buy it for $10, but actually you can just scroll down and you'll notice this message over here that says you can download it for free. So you can just click on that. So you have to just click Citizens 2 here and then proceed to click this big text over here as you can see. So this is basically the latest Citizens jar. So you can just uh, click save and go to your Minecraft server. Uh, make sure it's turned off. Uh, then file manager and then just go to plugins. And you can just upload it over here but as i already have citizens i'm going to skip that step uh, so now it's pretty much done and you have to just go to console and start the server and yeah let's go back to minecraft the first thing you need to do is create an npc so let's just go ahead and create an npc over here so all you need to do is just stand over here so you can just make sure that you're standing uh straight so that the npc doesn't look down like this so you can just type npc create and then the name so one thing I have to tell you is that if you just put the raw name, which would be like my player name, for example. Uh, so my player name is this. Uh, so if I just do that, uh, I think it's just, I think my skin is just going to show up. So as you can see, my skin is shown up and that's what happens when you just you know, create an NPC with the player name. But if you want to add something like color codes, you could just do that too. So it's like basically just NPC rename and then the player name. So that would be something like uh, there are some color codes. So I'll just show you the color codes on the screen. So as you can see, uh, you have, uh, there are some color codes and I'll be using uh, the gold color code, which is six. So here next, you can just type something like, uh, let's say green boy. And now as you can see, the skin is gone because the name is no more a player name. So now if you want to add a skin to it again, uh, there are two ways. One way is just type NPC skin and then that would be the player name. So you could do something like uh, let's say there's actually a player name called Minecraft and it's actually a pretty good skin. So you'll notice the skin over here. It has a cape and everything. But now if you want to add a skin from online, so like maybe from a website, maybe from a skin library. So let me just show you that now. So you need to go to this uh, website called Minecraft skins. So all you need to do is just search for a skin. So right now I feel like this skin looks good. So I have to just go past the ads. So now you need to click on image link and you'll be provided with a link so just copy it and go back to minecraft and you can type the same command now you'll notice some values called uh thing is that hyphen so it's hyphen hyphen url so you just type hyphen hyphen url and now you just paste the link and you'll notice that uh, the skin will show up here so that's how you upload a skin from online so that's how it's added to a minecraft npc now I have an NPC over here, which is like nicknamed with my player name, but it's actually a villager as you can see, and it's even moving. So now I'll be showing you how to do that. So let me just go back. Uh, so the first thing I'd show you is the path. So it's actually NPC path and you'll get a message over here on how to do stuff. So you can just like, all you need to do is just uh, left click. So on the ground somewhere, so you can just like go around left click uh, and you can just do that. And now it's just gonna like go in the path as you can see. So now if you want to remove a path, you just have to right click and the path will be removed by which I mean the waypoints. So it'll just stop walking overall. So you could like keep doing that and then you can just continue to like add waypoints really up to you. And then there are some settings over here. You can just scroll up to the old message. So there are some settings like triggers. So now I could just type like triggers and I could like add triggers. So it's kind of like uh, if you like go up to them, you could like add a message or some sort. So like you can just like type add to add the triggers. And now you got some menu over here. So right now I'll show you, for example, chat. So I could just type chat and I'll get another message over here. So I could add like a radius. So let's say the radius of five and let's add something as a chat message. So let's say hi arrow boy how are you so now if i go near to it i'll receive a message 
but right now i'm still in the editor so i can't so let me just like go to finish so don't forget to type exit so now if you go near it you'll see that it sends a message saying hi arrow boy how are you now if you just leave it so if you just go far from it uh, you, like the message won't be sent anymore because it has a radius of five so if you just go near it again you'll receive the message again so that's how it is you can just go back to it and you like let's just go to npc path okay you know i actually exited the menu so let me just enter the menu again and let me just enter triggers and let's just delete this because i don't need it anymore so i can just exit the triggers menu and let's just scroll up and there's another thing called cycle over here so it's kind of like it will cycle the waypoints rather than looping i personally haven't noticed the difference but i think it just works differently so you can just like go through that if you want to but you can just like type it again uh, i think it's cycle right yeah it is cycle and it'll just like uh, go back to looping now if you want you can just uh, remove the wave points altogether because i don't want it to keep walking when i do the rest of the stuff if you want to remove all the wave points you can just type clear and it'll remove all the wave points right so now you could like uh, actually add like text to it so i mean like if you want to interact with it and if you want the npc to send messages to you so you can just type npc text but before that uh, let's just exit this once one more time so i think it's npc path so all right i've exited it and let me just go to npc text so now i could like uh, add some text so let's say let's add some text so you have to just click on it and then you, you need to add a text or from you can just start from the start like add and you could type something like hi how are you so i've just done that and now you could like for example make it talk close or if you, you could like make it like uh, only talk when you click it so you can just keep it to this or you can just disable it again and as you have disabled it it will only work when you're clicking on it you could even like uh, click random so like if you have multiple text it won't follow the particular order uh, it'll just randomly send messages and there's even like speech bubbles so i'll show you that and then there's even realistic and now there are some stuff like item so something like if you want like the npc to only talk if you have a particular item in hand so i currently have a diamond so i can do just put that to diamond and i can even change the range to five or something like that and i can even add a delay so maybe like 40 ticks that would mean two seconds so do remember 20 ticks is like one second all right so i've done with that so i think i can just like click npc text again so now if i go near it and if i right click it nothing will happen but if i hold a diamond and if i right click it you'll notice that it will send the message as a speech bubble because that's what i had selected so if you want to do that you can just like uh, go to the npc text and as i showed you earlier you'll get this particular uh, message over here which you can just click to edit the settings so if you don't want it you can just like click that again and it won't it will show up as text instead and there are some more things that i can show you so what you could do is uh, there's this particular thing command called npc look so it'll start looking at you wherever you walk so that's a pretty cool feature so you can like just type it again if you don't want it to look at you anymore there's even more commands like npc tp so first of all you could do npc list so actually uh, if you want to tp to an npc you just basically click on it and you'll be teleported to it and you can even like summon the npc so let's just say you wanted to move it here and let's just like move it down here so if you summon it here it'll completely move here so that's how you do it and you can just click here too and the npc will be completely removed as you can see the npc isn't here anymore and now if you want to like uh, let's say you want to mount a npc you could do something like npc controllable and you have to actually select npc for that so let's just select npc and type npc controllable again and npc mount so once you've done that you'll be sitting on it so you can just use our uh, WHD keys to move around with the NPC. So this could be useful like if you want to move through, like, I mean, if you want to move the NPCs anywhere particularly, and then you can just type shift, uh, which would be a left shift as you know how to get off mount. So that's how you get off uh, the NPC uh, after you have mounted. So there are some more things that I can show you, like changing the NPC to a particular entity like villagers and a dragon. So I've currently selected it. So let me just select it again so you could do something like npc type uh maybe ender dragon okay not an ender dragon uh sorry i mean ender dragon so you could do that and it will completely uh change to an ender dragon as you can see but right now i want a villager not an ender dragon 
So we can just do a villager and let's just go near it again. So now uh, it's just a plain old boring villager. And I know you're thinking you want to change it to like a particular profession or like maybe a biome stuff. So to do that, it's basically just uh, NPC villager and the profession. So now you could change it to anything. So let's just change it to farmer, for example. So as you can see, it particular has, particularly has changed to farmer. So that's how it's done. And if you want to change uh, its biome, for example, so you could do it like this. So let me just go to like uh, villager type and I could change it here. So let's say uh, you want it to look like a villager from the snow biome. So if you do that, uh, it'll start looking like the villagers from the snow biome. So that's how uh, the whole villager type works. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more similar content. Make sure to check out Alexa Notes for affordable Minecraft hosting. See you soon.